Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this really easy crocheted cowl. Um, it is about 12 inches wide and about nine inches tall. Um, you can add or subtract um, the number of chains that you start with if you wanna make it wider or thinner and you can increase or decrease the number of rounds you complete to make it taller or shorter. All right, to get started crocheting your cowl, you will need a 12 millimeter crochet hook and one skein of Woolies Thick and Quick yarn. So using this yarn, which is a super bulky weight yarn and a bigger needle, a 12 millimeter needle, is a great way to get started crocheting because I feel like it's easier to manipulate the yarn and the hook when everything's a little bit bigger. It's also great because it crochets up really quickly. So if you're looking for a fun, quick project, it's great to use this yarn with a thicker crochet hook like this 12 millimeter crochet hook. All right, so we are gonna get started by making a slip knot with the end of the yarn. And to make a slip knot, I use what I call the pretzel method where I loop over the yarn like that and I bring the yarn behind into what looks like a pretzel. And then you take your crochet hook and you go over the first two loops and under that third loop and you Pull the yarn and the loop through. All right, so that is how you make a slip knot. Now, the pattern says to chain 46 chains. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And chaining is kind of like the foundational round in which we're gonna work our, uh, the rest of our rounds. So I'm going to show you how to chain. In chaining, we yarn over, and when we yarn over, we come from behind and up and around the hook, and then we pull through. So that is one chain. Show you again. Up, over, and pull through. Up, over, pull through. And as you start crocheting these chains, you will see these little ridges in the back. One, two, three. And one side is kind of a braided look and the other side has more of these ridges. And we're actually, actually going to be working in these ridges on our first round. But I just wanted to show you this because you can always go back and count how many chains you've made. So we've made one, two, three chains. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way to 46. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you wanna, I, try not to crochet too tight or too loose here. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46 chains and now we're going to join the chain in the round with a slip stitch so we're going to be crocheting in the round from the bottom up so to connect either ends of our chain you want to be careful that you don't twist this chain because if you have a bunch of twists in the chain and you connect it it's going to be hard to work in the base of the chain. And I just wanna show you both sides again. So this is the back with these bumps and we're gonna be working in each of those bumps. And this is the braided side. So what I like to do is kind of run my fingers all the way across and keep the chain kind of in one direction so I don't twist the chain, okay? 
And then when I get to the end, I bring it over, find that first bump, slip my crochet hook into that first bump, okay? And then we're gonna do a slip stitch here. So we're gonna bring the yarn over and pull it through both loops, one, two. And so now we've connected our chain and we've made sure that it is not twisted. Okay, so now we're gonna start the half double crochet stitch in each ridge on the back of that chain. Okay, so we are going to chain one loosely, which means you wanna make sure that it's pretty loose. And this will count as our first half double crochet stitch from here and throughout the rest of the pattern. So now we're going to continue making our half double crochet stitch in each ridge in the back of that foundational chain. So to, we're, gonna, we're gonna insert the hook in each of those ridges along the back. This is the braided side and this is the back side. So to work the half double crochet stitch, we're first gonna yarn over, okay? And then you insert your hook into that first ridge, that first ridge next to that chain one we just did. So that's this guy. It might be a little difficult to do the first time. This first round can take a little bit longer than the other ones because it can be a little difficult to wiggle your way into these ridges. All right, so we yarned over, inserted our hook into that first ridge. We're going to yarn over again, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And so now we have done one half double crochet stitch. So we're gonna continue working that half double crochet stitch all the way around. So yarn over, insert your hook into the very next ridge the very next ridge, we got the hook there. We're going to yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. All right, it looks it can look a little wonky at the beginning, but as you get going, you'll see how it shapes up. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next ridge, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, Pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into that next ridge. Yarn over, go through one loop, yarn over, and go through all three, go through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, through one loop, yarn over, through all three loops. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing this all the way around this chain. All right, so it looks like this. You'll keep going. And you can stop and count how many you have, and I recommend you just kind of waiting until you're towards the end all the way around so you can make sure you have the right number of stitches. But remember that chain one counts as the first stitch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches so far. All right, so I have continued that half double crochet stitch all the way around the base of that foundational chain and I'm nearing the end so I wanted to show you what it looks like as you near the end and it's important to make sure that you're not twisting the work um, and you can keep track of that by just kind of setting it down and making sure that it stands up nicely. So I have four half double crochet stitches that I need to finish until I get to the end. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to finish these half double crochet stitches and then I'm going to show you how I connect to that first chain space. We're going to do a slip stitch to connect it. Let's show you here. So I have one more half double crochet. 
And it can get a little tricky. Just again, make sure you're not twisting um, and you're gonna do a half double crochet in stitch in that last ridge. And it's a good time just to double check how many chains you have. I'm sorry, how many half double crochet stitches you have. You should have 46 and make sure you include that first chain one space as one of the 46 half double crochet stitches. So when we are at the end, we need to connect the top of this half double crochet to the top of that chain one space. So if you look at that chain one space, there is a top, there's a plate, there's a stitch at the top here. There's that braided look on the top and there's a little hole in between those two loops there. So there's the braid at the top and there's a little loop in there. So we are gonna insert our hook into that chain one space, just like that. I'll show you that again. So here's that chain one. We're gonna insert the hook underneath that those two loops that are like the braid there. We're gonna yarn over, and this is a slip stitch, we're gonna yarn over and go through those two loops and that loop. And that closes up our first round. And again, make sure you're not twisted. You want this to lay flat. All right, so we have finished our slip stitch. Now we need to chain one loosely. That counts as our first half double crochet stitch. And we are going to turn the work. So we turn the work around, okay? And now we will be working that half double crochet stitch in the back loop. So we're going to skip this first space because this is our first half double crochet stitch. So that is basically accounted for by this space. So we are going to yarn over and work in the back loop. So this is a little tricky to figure out exactly where you're gonna work. So with the half double crochet stitch, you'll see this kind of braided look in the front and you'll also see the braid on the top. And we are concerned about this area on the top and we are going to be working in that back loop. So you yarn over and we are going to be working in that back loop. Okay, so I'll show you again. You've got this braided looking part on the front, the braided looking part on the top. We are going to be working in that back loop on the top. So yarn over, insert your hook into the back loop. You yarn over again, pull through that first loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. All right. So when we work in that back loop, it enables this really cool braided part in the front to stay exposed. So we're going to yarn over and find that back loop again. It is that one right there. Yarn over again, pull through that first loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. All right, so you should see that full braid in the front. So yarn over, we're gonna find that back loop, and then you yarn over again, pull through that first loop, Yarn over and go through all, all three loops on the hook. All right, I'll keep doing this for a little bit so you can see. That first yarn over, I kind of start doing in one fell swoop. So it can be a little confusing, but yarn over, insert in that back loop, yarn over, pull that first loop through, yarn over, all to go through all three. So you can see we're starting to get this really cool braided, it almost looks knitted look. And I'm gonna just keep doing a few more stitches here so you can see back loop, pull up, yarn over all three. Back loop, yarn over. So we keep doing this all of the way around again. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you keep your stitch count correct 
And I would just recommend double checking if you're new to crocheting, especially crocheting in the round, because it can be confusing to keep your stitches straight before you really get the hang of it. So I'm gonna continue going around and I will show you again what it looks like to connect this round with a slip stitch once I get close to the other side. All right, just wanted to jump back in here. This is the end of round three. I'm just showing you again how I join. I'm gonna do a half double crochet in that very last H, in the back loop of that last HDC space, half double crochet space. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to that chain one space, going through those two loops, yarn over, pull through all three to connect it, chain one loosely, turn, yarn over, skip that first chain, and work the HDC in the back loop of the next space. And now we are on round four. So I will keep working and show you how it's looking. Now I just wanted to show you what the cowl is looking like after completing six rounds. So you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're a little more than halfway done. Um, you'll probably be able to get 10 or 11 rows out. Some of the woolies that can quick have different lengths, like the solids are a little bit long than some of the mixed color yarns. So, um, you know, you'll probably be able to get 10 or 11 rounds out of one skein. So you can work in, you know, some people crochet a little tighter than others. Some people crochet a little loosely, but um, so everyone's a little different. So I would recommend trying to get 10 or 11 rounds out of your skein for your cowl. So I have just started round seven. So I will check back with you when I am towards the end. All right, so now I am nearing the end of my final round, my 11th round. I can show you where I am here. And then I'll just show you how to end the cowl and weave in those ends and you'll be good to go. So my final HDC, I'm going to join the work again. And now I'm going to, um, well, here, I'll show you. You can actually cut the yarn now. Give yourself, I don't know, about six inches or so. You can join to the beginning of the round. Okay, and slip stitch through. And now just pull all the way through. All right. And then you're going to take a tapestry needle and weave the yarn through the tapestry needle and we will take this i like to kind of weave back through here a little bit and we just kind of follow the yarn down and pull the yarn through a little bit tighten it up you can even go down a little bit further i just kind of weave in those ends i am not very methodical about it some people are more methodical about it than I am. And then you just, once you've woven it in, as long as you'd like it woven in, you can snip the yarn. I give it a little tug a little bit, and then you do the same thing on the other side. Weave that yarn through the tapestry needle. Make sure you're um, putting it in the same, weaving it in on the same side that you wove in the other one. And just kind of Weave that yarn through down towards the work and loosen it up a little bit and snip it and your cowl is done.